Welcome to theCUBE's coverage of PagerDuty Summit. I'm your host for theCUBE, Natalie Ehrlich. And now we're joined by the CEO and chairperson for PagerDuty. We're joined by Jennifer Tejada. Thanks very much for joining the program. Hi, Natalie. It's great to have you and theCUBE with us again. Fantastic. Well, let's do an overview of what PagerDuty does and how it's helping its customers. Well, PagerDuty is a digital operations management platform. And what that means is that we use software to detect real-time issues and events from the complex ecosystem of technology that make, that's really hard for humans to manage. We then intelligently orchestrate that work to the right teams, the right people with the right expertise in the moments that matter the most to your business. And that's become especially important as the whole world has moved to a digital first world. I mean, pretty much everything we do, we can experience on demand today, but that's only made possible through the complex technology and infrastructure that's managed and operated by responders all over the world. And PagerDuty's digital operations solution communicates issues in real time to ensure a perfect customer experience every time. Terrific, and if you could go through some of the key features like on-call management, incident response, event intelligence, and analytics, it would be really great. Sure, so our, our heritage started with on automation for of the on-call situation for engineers. So back in the day, uh, many organizations had software engineers building apps, platforms, infrastructure, but then they would throw that over the wall to an ops team who would manage it in production. That led to poor code quality. It led to lots of challenges when people would release software in the middle of the night on a Saturday, et cetera. And it meant that it took a very long time for companies to manually get a problem into the hands of the right person to solve it. We automated all of that using an API-based ecosystem that connects to over 460 of the most popular applications, observability stacks, monitoring systems, security applications, ticketing environments, cloud environments, et cetera. And so all of that is now seamless. What that data enabled us to do was build an event management solution, which we call event intelligence, which now uses AI and machine learning to help responders understand the nature of all the different events coming at them. So for instance, instead of seeing a hundred events coming at you from 16 different monitoring environments in your infrastructure, PagerDuty will use AI to know that of those 100, 75 are part of the same incident. They're events conspiring to becoming a business impacting incident. And that allows our teams to get ahead of things, to become proactive versus reactive. We've also built analytics into our solution, which helps our customers benchmark themselves and their operational efficiency versus their peer group. It helps them measure the health of their teams and understand which services are causing them the biggest challenges and the most expense, whether that's labor expense or customer impact. And most recently, we've been really thrilled with our acquisition of Rendac, which helps us automate the remediation of events, which now means that PagerDuty can automate incident management and incident response, both upstream in terms of identifying events as they flow in, and also downstream, safe self-healing of infrastructure, application, and platform environments to get things back to the way they need to work in order to serve end customers and serve employees across an enterprise. We're really excited as our vision has expanded to become the ubiquitous platform, the de facto platform for real-time work. And what we've seen over the years is our customers coming up with very imaginative ways to use our software to solve real-time, unstructured, unpredictable work across the company. That can be legal teams managing across different geographies and business units to close contracts at the end of the quarter. It could be financial services companies that are managing their physical security as well as their digital security through PagerDuty where time really, really matters if you have a data breach or a potential physical security incident. It could be customer service where customer service and support teams are working very closely with engineering teams to identify issues that are causing customers problems and to manage those issues collaboratively so that the customer experience is protected. So just some examples of how PagerDuty is getting leveraged and we're really excited to talk about some new innovations at Summit. Terrific, well, you know, you really have your thumb on the pulse of corporate America. And as you know, last year we talked about the pandemic and now we're looking at going back to the workforce. We're looking at the future of work. What does that look like for you? 
Well, the future of work is here. And one thing is for sure, it has changed permanently. I think we all learned from the past year that remote work can provide a lot of flexibility um, and can level the playing field for people all around the world. It means you can access talent from different geographies. It means you can have a different level of work-life balance, um, but it also comes with its own set of complications. And one of the reasons we pulled Summit earlier from September into June was we really wanted to be a part of this kind of grand moment of reopening that we're seeing around the world. And that means that every organization that we're working with is redesigning their future. But that didn't start today. That started several months ago as companies learned from their remote work experience, learned from their on-demand experience in dealing with their own customers, and it took some of those innovations and brought them forward into kind of the new design for the way teams will work, the way brands interact with their customers. And at Summit, you're gonna hear us discuss why now is the moment, now is the moment to harness your digital acceleration because that's really the way that business is getting done. I mean, frankly, every business is now a software business and all business is now digital business. And PagerDuty has proven itself as the essential infrastructure on which all companies, all brands can build their success. And as we widen our aperture, we think about building the platform for not just today's challenges, but tomorrow's challenges. So at Summit, you'll hear us talking a lot about resilience and how your entire organization and your brand will be judged on your ability to stand up a resilient business, a resilient um, brand experience for your customers. Today, uptime is money and resilience and reliability are the currency of tomorrow. We're entering into this era where autonomy is everything when it comes to work. I mean, employees and you know, generally humans do not wanna be stuck managing mundane tasks. And the hybrid work arrangements that we're anticipating mean that PagerDuty's platform will become even more essential for customers because hybrid work drives more complexity. It means your teams are distributed. They may be distributed across regions, co-located, remote at home, in different time zones. And when something's going down that's really causing a problem in your business, you need to orchestrate work across the right people that can make a difference in that moment. Autonomy and flexibility, frankly, is what people expect from work. And they also expect to engage with apps and platforms that are easy to use, that are intuitive, that deliver really fast time to value. And that has long been at the core of PagerDuty's offering and value proposition. And none of these autonomous or, or automation investments replace human expertise. They allow our platform to channel that expertise and the expertise of your users to give them context and visibility to make the best possible decisions in the moment that matters. And I think that is so empowering as we think about this flexible new hybrid way of working. And then last and I love the points. Oh yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I love the points that you make about resilience and autonomy. I'd love it if you could just drive a little further how we can build more connection uh, now that we're going into the office and also integrating this kind of hybrid system. Well, I think it's really interesting because in some ways I feel super connected to my employees because I'm engaging with them one-to-one, -one, my box and their box. You know, there's, it's, I have had the opportunity to stay connected to customers and um, executives across the industry over the course of the pandemic. And yet I'm an extrovert. I miss the in-person opportunity, the kinetic energy that comes with being together in a room. And like, I'm looking forward to being back in studio doing interviews with you, Natalie. But at the same time, I appreciate the convenience that I've gained. Like, I'm not looking forward to commuting again. I mean, I plan to only get on the road during off hours in the future. And I realize that I don't have to travel six hours for a two-hour meeting on the other side of the U.S. or 15 hours to have a meeting in Europe. I can get a lot of business done online. Having said that, that connection is so important. The social contract that you create with your customers and your businesses is so important. And making sure that we can connect the complex technology that runs the world today is also really important. And that's where PagerDuty plays a role. PagerDuty helps you know who you need, what you can leverage them for, and gets them in touch when you need them. Like I said, on the work that is somewhat unpredictable, but can be very high priority, the highest priority in the case of a security breach or a major customer impact and incident. And so 
using AI ops, or sorry, using uh, AI and automation to make sure that we can intelligently route work to the right people is a big part of how our platform has come together and really become the central nervous system of the digital economy. Yeah, I mean, these are really great points and it's, you know, a bit of a silver lining actually with the pandemic, learning that we can really stay connected despite not being in the office and now have more uh, hybrid systems of work. But let's switch now gears to talk about leadership in our communities and how we can truly activate change in a far more just and equitable world. Well, I am a huge believer in social responsibility and social impact. And I really appreciate how all of our employees have come together to leverage PagerDuty's platform for good. Uh, when we went public, we launched pagerduty.org, which is led by Olivia Kalili. And I know you'll hear from her and some of our um, impact customers this, this week at Summit. But I think what's really important is how engaging it is for our employee base. Oh, last year, 93% of PagerDuty employees have volunteered their time for social causes and philanthropy. And that's in a time when we were all enduring a hardship of our own, when we were all facing an unprecedented pandemic. Um, we've donated over a million dollars in financial grants to over 400 organizations through strategic giving and employee match programs. And we've opened civic engagement. We've open sourced civic engagement with our day for change for our employees and our toolkits, which we've shared broadly throughout the industry. Um, we signed on to the board challenge, which I was thrilled to do because I'm a big believer that more diversity in the boardroom is going to lead to more equity in corporate America. And thrilled to add Bonita Stewart and Dr. Alec Gallimore to our board last year. Uh, and I think representation is so important at the board level, not just because it's the right thing to do, not just because it's the right thing for business, but it's the right thing for career growth for your employees, showing them the path to what's possible for them. Uh, with your company. And finally, we published PagerDuty's first ever inclusion, diversity, and equity report, which is part of our effort to provide transparency around not just what we're doing, but how we're measuring it, how we're progressing, so that we can get better every year. And we've highlighted our work to support time critical health, um, our work to support equity in uh, the response to COVID, including vaccine distribution. And I really enjoy some of the impact stories that we hear from our non-for-profit partners that are working with us at pagerduty.org. So, you know, leadership is what you make of it and you can lead from every chair in an organization. And I'm so proud of the leadership of our employees and many of our customers have demonstrated in this time of particular challenge around the globe. And we're not through it entirely yet. Uh, and so, you know, I'm just really hopeful that we can all come out of this better together. Right, and speaking about leadership, why do you think that diversity is so critical for effective leadership? Well, first of all, I think it's our responsibility to reflect the communities that we serve. Uh, you know, the my my users do not all look the same. They don't come from the same background. They're from over 150 countries around the world. They're solving a diverse set of problems. And in fact, the problems they're solving with our platform is growing every day as they imagine how to apply our technology, our digital operations platform to different real different types of real-time work around their companies. But diversity is also important in problem solving, in, in looking at challenges through different lenses, in thinking about the different stakeholders that you serve in that process, and in creating an equitable community around you, creating opportunity for people around you. I mean, one of the things that we did that was a business decision a couple of years ago was to open an office in Atlanta. And part of that was to create a path, create opportunities for Georgians and people in the metro Atlanta area to participate in the tech industry. This was before everybody was working from home, before those geographical barriers were broken down. And I'm thrilled to say we have a thriving community now in Atlanta that's growing and we're hiring. Uh, but that's just one example. That was a smart thing to do for our business, but it was also a great thing to do, I think, for the community. And we've brought new minds and all kinds of new people into our business. And, you know, this month we're celebrating Pride Month at PagerDuty, which I'm thrilled to do. We have very active LGBTQ community who contribute hugely to our efforts and to our customer success. And, you know, we think that everybody deserves uh, an equal shot at opportunity at the lifestyle they want and the opportunity to build their own bright future. 
Great. And just lastly, what's the main focus for PagerDuty in the next year? The main focus for PagerDuty next year is really executing on our strategy to become the de facto platform for real-time work, ensuring that we can leverage the largest domain agnostic ecosystem of connected apps and services, that we can leverage the largest data set based on responder data, workflows, events, and incidents to help our customers deliver the resiliency, the autonomy, and the connectedness that they're looking for to serve their customers and accelerate their digital prospects, and frankly, to prosper in the future. So it really is become about becoming that de facto platform for action for all your real-time unstructured and important work. Well, Jennifer Tejada, the CEO and chairperson of PagerDuty, loved having you on this program. Really appreciate your insights on diversity and leadership, and of course, the next phase for PagerDuty itself. I'm your host for theCUBE, now covering the PagerDuty Summit. Thanks for watching.